What's up everybody? I had been wanting to do like blackboard whiteboard videos for a long time and unfortunately if you, well you haven't seen this clip but I bought a big blackboard. All right, I'm hoping that this microphone, I'm testing it out right now, so hopefully this microphone's awesome. So, you guys may have seen me dragging this thing through the house. I really wish that you had seen the entire process. So this is a black dry erase board, like a glass dry erase board or whatever, that I really wanted for a while. But I thought I ordered one that was like five feet long by like three feet tall, and apparently I ordered one that's like almost seven feet long and like four feet wide. So uh, it is, I don't know if you can even see, like way bigger than what it needs to be. And that's fine. But I drove to Home Depot to pick it up and do the whole like sit in your car and wait for it thing. And the guy finally brought it out and there was no way that it was gonna fit in my car. So I had to come back and then I got some stuff. I strapped it to the roof and I had to drive like a grandma down the road so it didn't come up and bob and all this other crazy stuff. So we're gonna take it out of this box and we're gonna see, I don't know, it, it almost looks like it's gonna be too big to, I don't know, we're gonna, we're gonna see what happens. So hopefully this turns out as awesome as I hope. And just picking up the dang thing was a mess. And then I got home and there's too many windows in my house. It glares so much that no matter what I seem to do for lighting, it doesn't seem to work, right? So and now it's just like my, my kind of like my extension of my vision board where I write a bunch of stuff down and check it off. It's cool. It's very useful. But I should have just, like, that's what I get for going fancy. I should have just done a normal whiteboard. So now I'm going fancy again. I got this fancy pad and pen, which allows me to doodle on the computer screen and draw so that you can see what I'm drawing. Like, hi, right? Only obviously better. And then I can erase it and look at all that. Fancy, right? So I want to be able to bring you guys some more videos like this where I'm able to walk through a concept, talk through a concept and actually show you guys the concept, right? And I think that's very valuable because that allows me to like some of you, in fact, a lot of you are visual learners. So we're going to test it out today. I want to talk through house hacking, which is just an incredible strategy, right? Like house hacking is probably, well, is my favorite strategy anyway. And so I want to test this board out, test this style out. Let me know what you guys think. Please tell me like if this is a good or bad, I can refine it. Obviously, this is kind of off the cusp. The information in this video is going to be life changing if you stick all the way through because like legitimately house hacking has saved me tens of thousands of dollars and in terms of return on net worth for like long term like the realizations that this gave me and the like being able to take action going forward hundreds of thousands of dollars in net worth it just legitimately changed my life so house hacking is awesome but also i want to hear your feedback on the board and the video this style please smash that like button if you like this i was going to draw like a like button but my artistic, not good. So you don't want to see that. Subscribe to the channel if you get something out of it, guys. I would really appreciate it. I do all this for free. Well, I mean, I make made 300 bucks almost in YouTube last month, but I spent probably closer to 400 on editing. So yeah, I don't think I've had a, yeah, yeah. YouTube's not, I'm not the Graham Stefan, right? Like I'm not making millions of dollars on YouTube yet. So all that to say, love a subscribe. Hope you guys get something out of this content. All right, one of the reasons house hacking is so powerful is because let's just say this poorly designed thing is a house and it's got some windows and like there's a window and here's little Billy. All right, look at that. I'm getting the hang of this. So that's a terrible looking house. But the reason house hacking is so powerful is because You've been conditioned since you were born to go to school, get a good job, get a family, to have a kid, buy a house with a little white picket fence. Like that might not be your dream, but talking about buying houses to live in is a very, very, very common thing. So the only difference between this 
and buying, say, a duplex to house hack is that now you've got this thing that's a duplex because it's basically split down the middle, right? So let's say you got two units here and two units or two bedrooms there, two bedrooms there. And you can live in this half and you can rent this half. And this is why house hacking is so powerful because the only difference between this and this is that this one pays you money to live in it. Look at this fit. Erase, I'm so cool. Doo -doo -doo. So psychologically, it's the exact same because the one house you're buying it to live in and the other house you're buying it to live in. The only difference is you've got a landlord. Now, psychologically, it's easier to convince yourself to buy a house like that where you're living in the house and yada yada than it is to convince yourself to go and just buy an investment property, especially like an out of state investment property or something where you hear all these terrible stories about fixing toilets and tenants trashing the place and, and all this crazy stuff, right? There's all these scary things that we hear about becoming a landlord when we first get started. And you know, I mean, veteran landlords have, they've all had bad experiences. I've had, I've lost money. I've had bad experiences. I had a guy die in a unit and that was not a fun experience and not a, a very affordable experience, right? Like it was not good by any stretch of the imagination. And that's in another video, but stuff happens. And so we hear those terror stories or, or horror stories and we, we freak out and we think, oh, investments are scary and real estate's scary. And, but the difference between the, buying a house hack and buying a normal home for you and your family is minuscule. The biggest downside is like, yeah, you live next door to some people, but that's the same as an apartment. So like house hacking is perfect for most people as a beginner strategy, because you're going to get to learn, you're going to get to learn how to become a landlord and you're going to get to learn about taxes and you're going to get to learn how to be a property manager or how to hire a property manager which is another great strategy and you can hire that out not even tell them that you own it right and on top of all this you're going to get an affordable loan right like i'm going to put a l because al i don't know affordable loan <laughs> just because i had acronyms or whatever on there but primary residences like let's say you use the VA loan or the FHA loan, a primary residence loan is way more affordable, right? So 0% down or 3.5% down. Whereas a conventional loan is like 20% down, right? If it's an investment property, you're probably looking at closer to 25% down. So on a, let's say you're doing a 100K home, we're talking zero, 35, hundo, 25K. Which one sounds better for your first purchase? Um, not this, right? These two. This is why the VA loan is so powerful. And I've got all kinds of other videos on that. But even this, which is what I used the first time because I got talked out of the VA loan by my lender, it's way more powerful to use a primary residence loan where you don't need a ton of money. So if you're just getting started in real estate, this is affordable. You don't need to have a ton of money saved up. You don't need to be rich yet. And you can do this loan without a lot of money out of pocket. And you're going to learn how to be a landlord. You're gonna learn taxes. You're gonna learn about property management. You're gonna get that affordable loan, right? And then all the meanwhile, you're going to get rent and cash flow and awesomeness. So I'm gonna break this down real quick on my first deal. So here's the deal. At the time I bought my first duplex, I just finished reading Rich Dad Poor Dad and I was coming up on the end of my apartment lease. So this is my apartment, right? So I had this two bedroom, one bath apartment that I was rent renting for 550 a month, this is in Missouri, so prices are affordable, but just remember, and I'll get to this later, but the prices don't matter, percentages do, right? So even if, it, if it's a $100,000 house or a million dollar house, if the percentages of everything equal out, then it's okay, it, it, it's a bigger number, it's scarier, but it's the same thing, right? So think in terms of percentages and relativity. So anyway, so 550 a month plus utilities to rent this two bed, one bath. The duplex I found, this thing, I own 
two bed, one bath, two bed, one bath on each side, right? And about the same square footage, a little bit bigger, maybe had a little bit more of a living room, a better layout, but about the same size and a little front porch, right? So these, these each had like a little, little tiny, like front porch thing, you know, hanging out on either side. Um, whatever you get the idea. Now here's what my mortgage was on this bad boy, right? So once I closed, this is my principal interest taxes and insurance, a whopping 615, right? Now, yeah, plus utilities for my side, but so plus ute, right? So that is a difference of, yeah, for those of you bad with math, 65 bucks a month, right? Here's the crazy thing. I lived in this side, right? So I got my little wee, woohoo. And my tenants, yeah, you get the idea. <laughs> I'm still learning how to use this pen, forgive me. But they were paying 475 a month, right? So now, so we got my 615 minus 475, which for you math nerds is like, God, do I want to do that in public? I feel like I'm going to mess that up. 40. 140. Yeah. Yeah. So that's 140 bucks, right? That I was out of pocket plus Ute, right? So I went from paying 550 a month to rent a two bedroom, one bath to paying $140 a month to own two, two bedroom, one baths. Oh, by the way, my principal pay down on this property every month 150. So I am actually putting $10 a month into the principal or when all said and done, right? I'm actually like netting $10 a month because I'm paying down 150 a month, but I'm paying 140. So like of the 140 I'm paying, I'm keeping all of it in terms of equity as long as the property holds its value and an additional 10 bucks. And on top of this, yeah, there's repairs and there's maintenance. Like there's other stuff that goes into it. So at this point, I'm basically breaking even, right? Between the paying 550 a month and paying 615 minus the 475 minus whatever, like this one, I'm basically breaking even once you factor in principal minus like repairs and maintenance. And this one, I was out the 550 a month regardless, right? The crazy thing happens when I move out and I was able to bring rents up to market. So I moved out, bye. And check this out. This half now pays 525 and this half now pays 525 it's actually a little bit more than that but we're just making simple math here right so now i am pulling in 1050 to 1100 depending on like late fees or you know every i've had other tenants so it's kind of fluctuated but that's on the low end 1050 but sometimes a little bit more between various other bonus incomes but 1050 on the low end right and my payment, believe it or not, property taxes went down for whatever reason. So my payment actually dropped to 585. That leaves me $465 extra every month. Now there are, I pay my property management 7%. So that's 70 bucks and some change. And then I pay, you know, I've got, um, I pay some of the trash. So that's like 30 bucks a month. And then I've got some repairs and some maintenance, right? So there are some little things, but I am still pocketing like 200 to $300 a month. And we'll just say it's 300, right? Let's just round up. We'll say it's 300 a month because most months I don't have repairs. This property actually does fairly well, right? So let's say I cash flow after all is said and done 300 a month, which is for those of you mathematicians, 3,600 a year, right? You remember what my down payment was on a hundred thousand dollar property with the FHA loan? every year I get more than 100% back. Except this property actually only cost me 81,000, so my actual payments are lower. So anyway, so that's breakdown of one house hack. All right, just as a quick example, let's say you buy this fourplex, right? And you live in one unit, so you're getting 1,500 a month. Say it's a $200,000 fourplex, and so principal interest taxes insurance costs you about a thousand dollars a month rough 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 estimates but that's probably not too far off right now so that means you've got five hundred dollars a month coming in that'll basically eat up your repairs and whatever right and maybe some internet or some utilities or whatever 
and then so that's is what it is, right? So you're basically living for free. But once you go ahead and move out of this property, now you're getting 2K a month. Now you have $1,000 a month for repairs, maintenance, whatever. So that's basically like worst case scenario, 50% rule, right? Which is another rule of thumb, watch some other videos on it. We'll do some other stuff. But essentially, worst case scenario, you break even on this thing. I don't think that's realistic, right? So like more, like you're gonna cash flow on this bad boy. So you buy this home and then people are paying your principal down like three or 400 bucks a month going down to your on your loan while you're getting depreciation, while you're getting these tax benefits, while you're landlording, whatever, which is just incredible. But here's the real magic of the house hack. Besides learning how to landlord, besides getting this property that'll cash flow later, besides all the stuff you're learning and the fact that you're taking action and all that other stuff. Let's say, we'll just use my example, that I was paying 550 a month to rent my apartment. And let's say in my duplex, all of my expenses after everything was said and done came out to 250 a month, right? And let's say I lived in this property for three years. So this means that by just moving into the duplex, not including principal, not including tax advantages, not including everything I'm learning, I would save 300, right? This minus this. $300 a month, right? For my living expenses, which over three years, right? Right, right, follow me. So that's 30, 3,600 a year. So that's, uh, I don't know, like 11 grand ish. I'm sure there's some difference there, right? So like $11,000 that you saved by living in this house. And here's the real magic. Let's say you invest, like you save all of this to invest and you buy another house. So you can do a house hack and you can save up this money and then you can invest it in another house. And so now you've got this duplex, which you moved out of. So now this becomes a positive number, right? So instead of paying 250 a month out of pocket, now let's say you're getting 250 a month, right? So let's say this property is making you $250 a month to live in it. That's getting kind of clustered here. So you had duplex number one and you were living in it and you were paying, you were saving money, whatever, right? And then you moved out and so now it makes you $250 a month and you move into, we'll say a duplex again, duplex number two. And on this duplex, you're living, we'll say it costs you negative 250 a month, just like the other one, the exact same number. Now you're saving $500 a month, right? So this is basically break even, right? And you were paying 550 a month for your apartment, for your living expenses, right? Now that this is break even, that 550 a month that you had been paying is zero, which means that you now have $550 a month to invest. That's $6,6600 a year. So if you live there for three years, that's 20 grand. That's enough to buy property cash now. So by just cutting out the amount of money that you had been spending on an apartment, just getting rid of it and saving without counting in for principal pay down, appreciation, raising rents, tax advantages, anything, just by eliminating that expense and saving that money and just saving it to invest, you've started being able to buy properties on your own. You've been able to save for that down payment. So the power of house hacking is you learn how to landlord. You learn how to manage a property. You learn about whatever. You get over that fear of buying a house hack and you're able to live for free. And then once you live for free, right, through one house hack, two house hacks, whatever, you can save all the money you're paying to live to start investing. And so it can jumpstart your investing timeline and your capital. And then once you move out of that other house hack, now you've got two house hacks paying you to go and do the next thing, right? So I hope that this video was helpful. I know the board was kind of all over the place first time using it. Hope it was helpful. Let me know if you guys wanna see some more stuff with the board, but this is how the house hack can be so powerful. And if you want, I'll do this as a breakdown with the VA loan so that I can give you specifics, but you can do this without paying a single penny out of pocket. I hope you got something out of this. If you made it all the way through, let me know that you made it till the end and uh, smash that like button. Have a great day.